Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh. Welcome to Women's Radio Phase 2. This program is for women. If you guys listen, that's between you and the Holy One of Israel. It's not my place to teach you. <laughs> I've come across a couple of good studies and I want to share my first one with you. Um, I encourage you women, if you've got some money to squirrel away, um, you want a good study tool, get you the new Bible works. It's expensive, but it's got all the Hebrew on it. If you want to learn your Hebrew, I encourage you. I encourage you to learn your Hebrew. Um, it's fabulous. It gets into the depth of words within the context of the scripture where no one can refute the meaning of the words within the context of the Hebrew scriptures. Um, okay, I came across this wonderful study that came up at the beginning of my Bible Works program. And it's called, His Mercy is on them that fear Him. His mercy is on them that fear Him. Okay, we're the weak vessel, right? Yes, we are. That's what Yahweh says we are. Uh, we were the afterthought. Um, we were uh, taken out of the rib of Adam in the beginning. And we have a curse upon us because of Eve's disobedience. So where does that put us? Think about it. Where does it put us? Puts us in the same boat. We're still under that curse from now until the day that we die. But there's one thing about it. His mercy, Yahweh's mercy, is upon us, them, that fear him, that reverence him, that respect him, that obey him. You know, when you really love somebody, you want to obey them. There's no resentment in you. Sometimes we have to learn how to love people. That can be a tough one. Especially those that disobey. And those that uh, do you wrong. People that... Um, it's a difficult thing. And we're going to have that from now until the day we die. But we know that the word says to do good. To do good. Do good to them that despitefully use and persecute you. That's a difficult one. That could just about have to render instant charity. I'm not there yet. But if there's a plateau to attain to get there, I want it. Therefore, we have to be tested from now until the day that we die. Mashiach was our prime example. Look what they did to him. You know, we read about blood. Uh, we read about, the we come across the word suffering. Uh, we see in even Tehillim, the Psalms. Where um, he looked upon his entrails. He looked upon his, his, his parts that were uh, ripped apart. <laughs> he was marred more than any man. In one place my husband found it he was unrecognizable as a man. He was so ripped up from where they had beat him and tore him up. But he did it for us. We don't, you know, we can't fathom that kind of pain. Maybe childbirth if you didn't cheat. And uh, take those stinking epidurals that messes you up later in life. Um, maybe childbirth is just a very tip of the tip of the um, uh, needle pain, a tip of the needle pain. But his mercy is on them that fear him, that reverence him, that respect him. Uh, okay, let's read some of these verses. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and give you the scripture verses from where these are quoted from. I'd like to go ahead and give you the scripture verses now because they're at the bottom of this little study. Some I have, um, I've posted, I'm not sure. Okay, but um, I'm going to go to Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 50, Psalms, or Tehillim. Chapter 31, verses 19 and 20. I'll be going to 1 Peter 1 and 17. Then back again to Psalms 145 
18 and 19, verses 18 and 19, that's Psalms 145, verses 18 and 19. Then we'll be going to 2 Kings, chapter 22, verse 19, that's 2 Kings, chapter 22, verse 19. Then we'll be going to Isaiah, or Ishaya, chapter 66, verse 2, that's Isaiah 66, verse 2. And finally, Psalms 34, verse 18, that's Psalms 34, verse 18. So now I won't have to stop and give you verses and I can continue with my thought train, all right? <laughs> so I'll just read you some of these verses in the context that they were, in the order that they were given. And I'd like to stop and examine some of the words that are in these verses from the Hebrew perspective. And this is so important. This is so important. The Holy Scriptures, or Kitve Kodesh, have been given from the Hebraic perspective, not a Christian perspective. The word Christian was never in the Hebrew text. They were called Meshik Kiim. Meshik Kiim. Meshik coming from um, the Hebrew root word Mashiach. And the Im part is like a plural, like a followers of Mashiach or believers in Mashiach. Okay? So with this being said, let's go back to his mercy is on them that fear him. And this, of course, is taken from you know, um, the verses that we uh, that I quoted earlier. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid upon for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to be reading, of course, from the King James Version. You can hear the these and the thous. Uh, a lot of people, by the way, I want to interject this as well. I'm running another rabbit trail, yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of people want to do away with the, with the KJV. That's okay. If you want to do away with it, that's okay. This is where we started, but we can prove the name of Yahweh, and we can find the Hebrew from the KJV and put it in its rightful perspective. So we can throw away a lot of versions because a lot of versions have quirks in them, right? But we go back to the original language that Yahweh gave us, the Hebraic language. So with this link being said, let's go back to this. Okay. Thou shalt hide them. Hide what? Let's go back to the previous verse. How great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. Hide who? Those that trust in him. Trust. Raw gut faith. We don't see faith. We don't hear faith. We don't feel faith. Raw gut faith. You, Yahweh, shall hide us, me and you ladies, in the secret of his presence, of thy presence, from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Look, he doesn't say he's going to stop the tongues. He doesn't say he's going to stop the persecution. He doesn't say he's going to stop the mouth that rises up against you. He doesn't say that he's going to stop them that brutally torture you. He doesn't say that he's going to stop them from cutting your head off. He simply says that he's going to keep us secretly in a pavilion within our spirits now. From the strife of tongues. He's going to keep us in the secret place. Where's the secret place? It's in the Holy of Holies. Now how do you get to the Holy of Holies? You can find that in, in the study that Abba gave me on protocol of prayer. We start off entering into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Then we go up some steps to leave this life. To enter into the first floor. Then we ascend up to the sacrificial floor where repentance and brokenness is. And a lot of people stop there. That's what Yahweh told me. They stop at the sacrificial floor. But we got to go on. Go on into the Holy of Holies. And that means you got to climb 12 more steps to get into the secret place. From the strife of tongues. When we can get ourselves, ladies, in a place of intercessory prayer, 
beyond the sacrificial floor of repentance and hide in the secret place within the brokenness and the realm of the Holy Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. When we can keep ourselves in that place on a daily basis, things aren't going to change around us. Circumstances may not change around us. Maybe they won't and maybe they will. Maybe Abba will give you a break in your spirit. Maybe he'll cease from strife, all the junk that's going on around you. Maybe he won't. But he will give you a peace deep within that if nothing changes, you are going to have that joy deep within knowing that your daddy in heaven is mindful of you. But it's going to take some consecration. It's going to take a maintenance of keeping that daily dedication, that daily consecration in the Holy of Holies. Not just on the sacrificial floor or, an, or the now I lay me down to sleep. Okay, I've, I've eased my conscience. I've bowed my face before your throne and I've prayed. Uh-uh. What, where's the real relationship? I can't wait when I first wake up to get me a wake-up shower and get on my face. I can't wait for that time alone with my daddy who gives me strength throughout my day, who keeps me in the joy of his presence even when I'm under fire and under affliction, who keeps me in the, in the joy of his Holy Spirit because I can find the secret place when all hell is breaking loose all around me. I'm so grateful for that hiding place. I want to stay there. All right, let's read on here. Thou shalt keep them Who's the them again? Those that trust in him. Keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. All right, let's read on some more. If you call on the Father, I like to call him my daddy, Abba, Avi, Avi Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, in reverence, in respect. Yahweh is nigh. He's close unto them all that call upon him in truth. Now, maybe not everybody's in truth. I wasn't always in truth. But I did have his Ruach, his Holy Spirit, that has led me to this point that has led me to this point of truth and if there's more I want it and I always want to stay hungry for strict straight truth to keep my attitude and my spirit under the blood and walk uprightly within my heart not making any excuses no matter if anybody around me doesn't change I don't want to make excuses before my daddy in heaven that I have an attitude problem if people never change. So I, I just go to him if I have a problem and say, here it is again. Here's something else that's come up again. These people are railing on me or saying things this or doing things or mistreating me. Um, and, and I need you to intervene. And if you don't intervene, I'm going to trust you that this affliction is going to perfect me. So I'm going to thank you for this affliction. And I pray that you put some kind of conviction in the tongues of the people that are not right. That are not doing right. And keep my heart and my attitude under the blood if these people never change. Okay, here we go. Again, Yahweh is nigh unto them. He's close to them. That call upon him in truth. Again. We've all grown. We've all been given the measure of faith, right? The measure of faith. That's what Yahweh's word says. Every human from the beginning of time has been given the measure of faith, ladies. But what do we do with that measure of faith? We surely don't want to get stagnated, do we? And be content where we are? I don't want to be. I'm thankful for what Yahweh sends my way. (laughs) My flesh may not be thankful. My flesh might be, might be squealing and get in the brat mode, okay? My flesh can get in the brat mode. I don't want to be in the brat mode. 
I want to receive what y'all was giving me. If it's correction, if if it's if it's trying to chop off the limbs underneath me to get me to climb higher, I don't mind that. But just a kind word every now and then will do. <laughs> when when the railing is going on all around me, and I find that my real kind words come from Yahweh's people. First of all, Yahweh Almighty. He gives me a kind word in due season. But I especially find that I'm grateful for the kind words from those few, very few, and I can think of a handful here, that really want to live the strict and the straight route without distraction from outside influence of worldly carnality. Okay, so Yahweh is nigh, he's close unto them that call upon him in truth. He, Yahweh there now, will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry, and I will save them. I will save them. Wow. I will save them. I will save them. I'm going to break down some of these wor words here in just a minute. Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before Yahweh, and hast rent thy clothes, and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith Yahweh. There is a lot in this verse. There's a lot in the verse prior to that. Because these, I'm going to read these last two verses again. I want you to pick up try to see what I'm talking about here. Well, what he's talking about. Alright, it says again, Yahweh is nigh unto them that call upon him in truth. Not in what you think is truth. Not in what I think is truth. But what his word says is truth. Whether you want to, whether your flesh wants to believe it and obey it or not. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Then it reads on, Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before Yahweh, and hast rent thy clothes, and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith Yahweh. Okay, let's break down some words. Let's look at the meaning of humbled or humble. And it's the Hebrew root word kana. Kana. And it means to be humble, to be subdued, to be brought down, to be low, to be under, to be brought unto subjection. To humble oneself. It names it again. And then it renames these words again. Alright. It got the, the scripture reading goes on. To this man. What man? The one that's humbled themselves. For us, it's women, okay? This gives the male gender, but I'm teaching women. And this applies to us, the weaker vessel. To this man, or for us women, will I look even to him or her, that's us, that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at the meaning of poor. He looks unto them that is poor. Okay, the meaning of poor is the Hebrew root word ani. Ani. And it means poor, afflicted, humble, wretched, needy, weak. And then it gets into poor, weak, afflicted, wretched, and humble, and lowly again. Alright, this is the meaning of poor. Alright, I will look even unto him that is poor and, there's another something, and of a contrite spirit. And, another and, trembleth at my word. But let's look at this second and, of a contrite spirit. Okay, we know who, what poor is, but let's get into a contrite spirit. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> I overlooked another cool thing. There's a root of the root word poor. <laughs> Just about forgot that. Okay, it was the first root word was ani. This one is ana. 
And this root word for poor gets a little bit more strenuous. Okay, it means to be occupied, to be busy, to afflict, to oppress, to be bowed down, to be put down. In other words, there's a force that's behind this. There's a force that is afflicting you, whereas the first one, you're already in that state. But this on ana, there's a force behind putting the affliction. There's a force behind the afflict, uh, behind the oppression. Uh, to be put down, to be depressed, to be downcast, to be afflicted, to stoop down, to bow down, to be humiliated. Okay? We can be put in these positions, ladies. Okay. So, um, okay, before we get into contrite, I want to look at this, this next verse. Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. All right, in the verse prior we read that I even will look unto him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Sometimes we do, do we take his word too lightly? Do we forget what his word says and we don't obey it? We do what we want to do. We had a preacher here this past weekend, and uh, it was so funny. And uh, he said something in the way of food, and he named this certain food chain. He says, I'll have it my way. Not Yahweh's way. I'll have it my way. Now, we, thought, we all thought that was kind of comical. But, but Yahweh will, will look into them that are poor and of a contrite spirit and tremble at his word. But then the reading of the word goes on to say, Y'all was nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So we, before we get into contrite, let's examine that. Uh, we know what a broken heart is. Have you ever had a broken heart? Sometimes it feels like a physical ache, depending how, how deep the, the, the pain is, depending on how, how hard hit the heart was. It's, it's, it's like an ache in your heart. That's where that term comes from, heartaches. Heartaches, broken pieces, ruined lives are why. Yahweh died on Calvary. Oh, your touch is what we all long for. Hallelujah. Remember that song? Did y'all ever sing that? Wow. Here, I'm just sitting right here minding my own business, and I got a song coming to my heart. Okay, let's go back to the Word. Hallelujah. You know, songs are good. You know, something that you feel deep inside, and it makes you feel the presence, but we don't want to depend on feelings all the time, right? No, we can't do that. Too much of this life is ruled on emotion and feeling. Sometimes there's not gonna, we're not even going to feel Yahweh. And we have our prime example with Mashiach who had been brutally tortured, hung there, ripped to shreds, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my Elohim, my El, my El, why have you forsaken me? He felt that. He's Mashiach. We're going to have the like same thing. And we're getting in boot camp right now, experiencing light affliction. We've not yet resisted unto blood women not yet resistant unto blood okay back to the word here again Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit okay what does it mean saveth it means just what it says to be delivered from to be victorious to save to save from moral troubles to give victory to to help to be a preservant salvation now for the meaning of contrite contrite and this gets into the root word daka daka and you know what this is dust <laughs> from the dust of the earth Yahweh created man and then we came from his rib, right? Dust. That's about as low as you can get. Dust. 
This is wood I'm banging on. I'm not outside. Dust. It's filthy. It's dirty. It's dirt. <laughs> Contrite. Dust. Dirt. Put your face in dirt. Bow your face in dirt. That's what we were made from. I remember one time we were so long. I know this is going to sound stupid. might sound stupid to a lot of you. It wasn't stupid to me then. But we were desperate for rain. And not only that, I needed some spiritual rain some many years ago. Probably five or six, seven years ago. And I said, Abba, please send a rain. Everything is so dry and barren and thirsty. And, you know, sometimes we can get that way ourselves in our spirit. And I said, Abba, you just, you just send us a nice rain. And I don't mind bowing my face in this mud that you send and give you thanks. And I'm going to tell you, the rain came within just a couple of days. And it was mucky and miry, and I'm down at my barnyard. I'm not in the barnyard. I'm outside the gate of the barnyard. And I bowed my face in that mud. I put my face in that mud. And I thanked Yahweh. I thanked Yahweh for that rain. And sometimes, with a contrite spirit, we got to bow our face in the stinking mud, in the stinking dust, if it's dry and barren and you don't feel nothing what have you put into your relationship are you dry and barren because you haven't put any effort in keeping your relationship close and nigh he's nigh he's close to them that are a broken spirit plow up your fallow ground if you go getting hardened because of situations and circumstances of this life you better get on your face and break your flesh I don't want, I don't look, I don't want to have to be broken. Now, if I need a whooping, so be it. And anytime anything ever happens to me, the first thing I think is, okay, is this a trial or is this a spanking? And if it's, and if it's uh, a try, if it's a spanking, Abba lets it come before me quickly what I've done so that I can endure the spanking, repent. Maybe it's something that I did that I didn't even know. That's why I ask him on the sacrificial floor, forgive me for my ignorant sins dust what's the, hey, okay now listen to this contrite daka dust just it even gets into destruction on that but the root of the root word of daka is means to crush to be crushed to be broken and it names crushed shattered Break into pieces, bruise, smash. <laughs> wow. How awesome is this, ladies? How awesome is this? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But Yahweh delivereth him out of part of them, some of them, no, all of them. And personally, I'm persuaded that we're not going to be completely delivered until death do us part. But how we behave ourselves during the affliction is another story. So I ask you the question, ladies. Is any among you afflicted? Let her pray. So how do you pray? With brokenness. With your face in the dry desert sand. The dust. Until the rain comes. And then you bow your face in the mud. And thank him for the rain, for a refreshing. Thank him for a relief and a little break from the affliction because it's going to come again. And it's going to hit harder. And it's going to hit harder until the time comes when we actually will have to resist unto blood. Unto blood. Okay, got to make some announcements. If you want to know why, your Savior and Redeemer is only named Yahweh, not any kind of Shua name or a J name. Please write to Jerry or Kathy. My husband has his own YouTube channel programming, teaching from the Hebrew Scriptures and a KJV and any other version you want. But we stay with the Hebrew Scriptures. Why? Your Savior, Redeemer is only named Yahweh. 
Again, write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. That's 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. Or we invite you to call us at 770-7840703. That number again is 770-7840703. We invite you to visit our website, which is www.yawa. You must spell it Y-A-H-W-A-H with a little hyphen ministries.org that's yawa y-a-h-w-a-h with a hyphen ministries.org you can look at all of our um, our television program and our radio programming over the past 27 years until next time ladies I encourage you emphatically to seek Yahweh with all your hearts Shalom